All right, in this video, we're going to graph a piecewise function. And in this piecewise function, we have a line, we have a parabola, and then we have a constant function, which is going to be a horizontal line. And let's just focus on each piece individually, hence the word uh, piecewise function. So looking at this blue one right here, let's just think of it as being y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. If you recall, y equals mx plus b, this number right here, this negative 1 half, is your slope, and this number 3 is your y-intercept. Let's go ahead and plot that y-intercept on our y-axis at 3. Our slope of negative 1 over 2, we can think of this as being two different ways, but they actually mean the same thing. Um, we can just put that negative at either the top or the bottom. Going down 1 and right 2, I want to do that from this y-intercept, down 1, right 2, is the same thing as going up 1 and to the left 2. So we can do this, this right here as well, up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2. And the reason why I'm going further over here, I'm going to explain why from our piecewise function. Notice I'm putting a bunch of dots. You don't have to put this many, but it uh, never hurts. Nice straight line. So let's go ahead and graph this line. And I want to stop it right there. The reason why I want to stop it right here is, look at this domain over here. We only want to use this line when x is less than or equal to negative 2. Well, let's look at this x value right here. This x value is negative 1, negative 2. Let's look at this x value right here. It is negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4. Let's look at this x value right here. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6. Notice all these x values that I'm mentioning along this line, all those x values are less than or equal to negative 2. So we don't need these dots here. That just helped us uh, graph that line. Now, what do we want to do about this equal to symbol that you see right here? You want to emphasize that with a nice solid dot. There's, it's nothing special about it, but when you're graphing this, uh, especially using pencil and paper techniques, you want to emphasize that if it's equal to, you want to use a closed dot. And I'll tell you what, you don't, I'm going to erase these just to make it look nice and clean. You can leave them there if you want. Your, your teacher's not going to count it wrong, but just to uh, clean it up a little bit. Now keep in mind that this line does go on forever in this direction because all these x values, as we move to the left, or this line shoots this way, all those x values are less than or equal to negative 2. So our blue line is done. Let's move on to our parabola. Now if you forgot how to graph a parabola, lucky for us we have another technique to help us uh, do this, and it's a t-chart. We can plot some points. Now you don't want to plug in points like negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, there's no need to waste time on those, and the reason why I say that is because, look at your domain and your piecewise function. You only want to use this parabola when negative 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 3. Basically what this means is you want to use numbers for x between negative 2 and 3. So let's write down some numbers. How about negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, we're going to be careful with this one. I'm going to come back to this one when we go to plot it, but let's still plug in all these numbers one at a time. Let's plug them into here. So let's start with negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 5, negative 1. Plugging in negative 1 into this. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 1 minus 5 gives you negative 4. Plugging in 0. 0 squared is 0. Minus 5 gives you negative 5. Plugging in 1. 1 squared is 1, minus 5 gives you negative 4, plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 5 gives you negative 1, plug in 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 5 gives you 4. Let's go ahead and plot these ordered pairs. Notice we do have an x and a y, and um, this first one, since I'm gonna, that's the first one I see, we don't want to put a closed dot on this. Notice you don't see a, a equal to symbol, so we don't want x to be equal to negative 2, but we still want to emphasize this ordered pair at negative 2, negative 1. Let's, uh, let's use an open circle for that because we don't have that equal to. It wasn't there, just like that. It's not really there. So we use an open circle when we don't see the equal to symbol. Let's plot the rest of these. Negative 1, negative 4. So negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Next one, 0, negative 5. That's going to be right here. Uh, 1, negative 4, so we got 1, negative 4, right there. 
2, negative 1, 1, 2, negative 1 right there, and then 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, when you're making your parabola, don't do it with straight lines. Make it look nice and smooth with a nice curve, or do the best you can. Something like this, and then make it nice and smooth. That's good enough. All right, there's our parabola. Again, since we don't have that equal to symbol, we don't want x to be equal to negative 2. So when I have that dot, I'm going to use an open circle there. And here's our parabola, nice and smooth. All right, the last uh, piece here, 6. Y equals 6. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, or maybe your teacher's mentioned it, or I've definitely mentioned it in class, if you see y equal to a number, I want you to think of hoi. H stands for horizontal. We're going to have a horizontal line. Let's look and see where y equals 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On our y-axis, y is equal to 6 there. But y is also equal to 6 here, and here, and here, and here, and here, all the way across. We can also go this way. But actually, I'm about to erase some of these lines, The reason why, or erase some of these dots. And the reason why I'm going to erase some of them is because we only want this line when x is bigger than 3. So let's get our line, and I'm going to draw a line right there. Let's go ahead and change that color so it looks and matches nicely. And notice this line that we have here. Look at all these x values. Well, we don't need these. This just helped us graph the line. But now look at all these x values. That x value right there is 1, 2, 3. Now, do we want x to be equal to 3? I don't see an equal to symbol, so therefore you want to emphasize that first dot right there. Right here, where x is 1, 2, 3, you want to use an open circle for this line because we want x to be strictly greater than 3, not equal to it. So we have an open circle, and you can leave these dots up here if you like, or if you just remember to draw a horizontal line, bam, just draw a horizontal line. Notice all these x values, like right here, that x value, let's drop it on down, where are we at? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's about where we were, I'm guessing, but all these x values here. This is 3, this x value is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it goes on forever. All those x values are bigger than 3, and the y value on all those dots or on that line, all those y values are equal to 6. But there's your piecewise function. So remember to use closed circles when you have the equal to symbols and use open circles when you don't have the uh, equal to symbols. It never hurts to use a t-chart. You could even use a t-chart for lines if you forget how to graph lines, but I thought it would be a good idea to review the y equals mx plus b thing here. And there you have it, an example of a piecewise function. And that is it for this video. Hope it helped.